Donnie's emotional swings put him in and out of hospitals. That was very hard. I went to see him once. He was in one of the private hospitals in, in the city. He was, Donnie was sitting there at the piano with his cap on and his robe and his pajamas. And he was just playing. Yeah. So it never stopped for him wherever he was. He had been admitted to a hospital. He didn't want to be there anymore. That was it. He had had enough. And so they called Mrs. Hathaway and she called me and uh, told me, please go with her to the facility. And he was a little bit more vocal than I had witnessed before. And uh, he was disturbed. That's what Eulalia was dealing with, his mood swings. Extension of a Man was Donnie's final solo record, and very little publicity followed it. Sometime after its release in 1973, Donnie simply dropped out of sight. Stories were flying around and, you know, the gossip and... and one, at, you know, I guess at a certain point people didn't know what to think because he kind of had disappeared. In 1973 and the years subsequent to that time, Donnie was sick. So that's why he peaked as well as he could, but beyond that point, not being on medication, this, you know, this kind of thing, he had peaked, period. Between 1974 and 1978, Donnie's career withered. His musical output ceased. He lost touch with his friends and he split with his wife. Absent from his family, his daughters don't remember him. I don't really have a memory about my dad. I'm like six or seven in that period, so I can only look back on that time now and, and look at it from now. Donnie got involved with a woman named Charlotte, with whom he had a third daughter named Donita. I'm the baby. I'm the youngest. I am the only child with my mother and father. Um, Layla and Kenya are my half-sisters. Intent on understanding a father she barely knew, the youngest Hathaway learned about him from her mother, who died in 1997. She said when he would take his medicine, he would be fine. When he didn't, um, it would, she said she could take him for maybe two or three days and then would need a break. Um, what she meant by that, I can only imagine. She made it very clear to me, you know, who he was. To this day, I've wanted to have my father's music be uh, someplace just higher. He was very passionate about what he was doing. It was very soulful. It's very easy to have songs come and go, but he, he had a very big rep reputation of having quality music. It was a reputation that made his absence felt by the industry. Donnie did eventually return to the studio. The results were both inspiring and tragic. I think he knew that something was going to happen. You know, I don't have any set hobbies, like I'm getting into exercising, you know, trying to keep myself fit, you know, for the next 80 years, I hope. And I want to uh, grasp more of uh, the New York uh, concept of life, because I feel if you can make it in the capital of the world, you can make it anywhere in the world. By 1978, it was disco burning up the R&B charts. Many of Donny Hathaway's contemporaries had evolved to define the new dance sound of the era. But Donny himself had spent five years in obscurity fighting mental illness. Hungry for a comeback, Donny teamed up with an old friend. While he had a period of being dormant for a moment musically, he was working on his stuff. And he was reuniting with Roberta Flack and 
What I remember most is that they just did some of the best love songs of all time. They were about to do another. It was one song, and it appeared on Roberta Flack's record, Blue Lights in the Basement. It was a massive hit. It didn't take too long for me and for the DJs in the country and for the audience to understand that that song was the gem in that album. The closer I get to you shot up to number two, Donny Hathaway was back. As far as I'm concerned, it never went away, you know. I mean, I, I, it may have been of, a, of variations in his levels of success. You talk about the public acceptance. It's important, but that's not what your, your, your ability is based on. Now back in the spotlight, Donnie returned to the studio immediately to record an entire record of duets with Flack. In January of 1979, Donnie traveled to New York to record vocals for the new songs, which included You Are My Heaven, co-written by Stevie Wonder and Eric Mercury. It was to be um, uh, an entire album of, of duets, which I thought was fabulous. Uh, Stevie and I wrote that, You Are My Heaven, which was, funnily enough, just the last song he re recorded. Donnie's illness robbed him of many things, but not his voice. When he sang, I like to say he had this stained glass voice. There was God inside him, and it was outside him. You could hear it. And he wasn't... I never believed that he was in control. Now, it's good that the recording session came off as well as it did. But there again, I say, um, you know, he shouldn't have been working. Period. The vocals were solid, but Donnie's mental state was more fragile than anyone knew. Donnie had been ill. This particular night, he was singing, he sounded good, but at some point in the session, he screamed and ran out of the room. He was like huddled in a corner crying. And I said, Donnie, I said, brother, what, what's, what's up? He said, them two men, they're trying to kill me. I said, who? He said, white people. He said, they have my brain hooked up to a machine and they're stealing my music and my sound. He wasn't being himself. So this is hard. So um, I called the session off. The musicians left the studio. For Donnie, it was the last time. <laughs> 